that's the idea. To walk in front of me, to pass by me, back and forth, up and down. So I can never have my eyes rested. There's always something crossing, something going, somebody walking strange, uh, noises, trucks. We're at a different intersection now. Look at the truck. Look at these guys. There's always somebody handicapped or an elderly or a guy with a bike or a guy somehow looking at his phone, moving his hand back and forth like fucking military. Attractive girl. Always. These are the moves. So every bus stop that I'd be standing at, those are the things that are going to pass by and those are the things that are going to stay with me. Always. And at least a couple people with Down syndrome every day. Every day. At least. I see about six, seven. The gym I work out at, I got there, there were none. They started showing up. And for some reason, if I want to work out, I want to do back, they want to do back. But right beside me. If I go on the treadmill, they want to go on the treadmill right beside me. So he wants to always encircle me with people with a handicap for some reason. I don't know his message. What his message is in that, but... He wants to encircle me with them and the elderly and the beautiful women or people that, you know, you want to be circled with. They ignore you and they go far away to places for you to follow them and then they go to another place. It's a way for him to put in front of me what I would want and take it away or put in front of me things I don't want and keep them around me, surround me with them. So it's a, it's, a, it's a weapon of irritation, provocation, and uh, pretty much a tight grip on you so you're miserable the whole time, no matter what. And always big objects are in front of you. They put them in front of you, whether they're bright colored, fluorescent, there's always big objects. So I don't have my eyes or ears rested for one minute. One minute. There's always something passing by, always. Whether it's to irritate me with sound or to irritate me with vision. So I have to go through this the whole day. That's the goal. And then when I get home, either the elevator's not working for stupid reasons, there's water in it like yesterday. Where did the water come from to go into the elevators in the first place? So it's all these things that are going on over and over again. Number one, bikes. Number two, uh, wheelchairs. Number three, dogs on leashes. Number four, very attractive women ignoring me and passing by and going away or giving me dirty looks. Number five, uh, people talking loud on phones for no reason. They're right in front of each other, face to face, and they're talking loud, screaming almost and laughing and overjoyed. It's fakely uh, overjoyed, overjoyed in a fake way. Um, big objects, people walking towards me, people behind me. Everywhere I enter, someone's exiting. Everywhere I exit, someone's entering in my face. As we saw today in the morning, as soon as I left the apartment, I went to grab the elevator on the 16th floor, which is the last floor. You don't expect to be anybody uh, to see anybody into the elevator. I see these two guys, supposedly construction guys, fixing something on my floor, and there's nothing to fix. Uh, they show up right in my face as soon as I'm about to, about to go in. Because people on my floor, they go straight into the elevator, not expecting anybody to be in it. Anyways, uh, what else? Kids, carriages, uh, a lot of them. Uh, some of them, their kids, if they're quiet, they hurt them on purpose so they can start screaming, uh, coughing, sneezing. Oh, here we go, talking loud on the phone as soon as I started talking. For some reason, around me, everyone wants to talk on the phone loud. They, they have a reason, or they've passed by talking loud, then they get to another place, they're talking low. So, big trucks, noise, listen to that. Why is she screaming on the phone? You don't have to scream on the phone, they can hear you. And he always picks people that speak really strange languages that are annoying on the ears. The more annoying the language is, the more he finds people that speak that particular language. 
So I don't know if I covered all of them. There's about 10 of them, 11, 12, attractive women. Oh, women with big butts. Uh, I like women like that. So he keeps on popping them up in front of me to distract me. At the same time, he gets them to act weird around me in a way where they're ignoring me or they're looking at me in a bad way. Or So I feel discouraged. Uh, so it affects my confidence that I can't get women like that. I don't know. I don't know what he's trying to say by that. But you're going to see a lot of that. And they're going to be positioned in a certain way where their butt is in my face. Whether I look that way or that way, you're going to notice that. It's not that there's going to be random passing by or random standing on the corner. It's the way they, they're positioned. So my phone is my eyes, guys. Wherever my phone's going to record, that's what my eyes see. That's how you're going to know that this is set up. And like I said, every trip when we started, I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen before we start the trip. So you know, I know what I'm talking about. Oh, the dog on a leash, here he comes. So now you know exactly what I'm talking about. That was the only thing that we were missing. And the bus stop gets packed before I get in. It's always packed, there's a thousand people. Oh, and girlfriend experience, I missed that. The guy waiting and then the girl shows up, they hold hands, they kiss, he's trying to tease me with that one. This is a classic, the girlfriend experience one. So fake, it's so obvious, pathetic. It's so staged and set up. 